thanks for the introduction, Sajiv. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Um, it's been a really fun workshop so far. Uh, so thanks for organizing. I really enjoyed the talks uh, and I'm glad to be here and thanks for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, so what I'll talk about in the next uh, half an hour is um, our experience uh, with doing multi and cross language verification using SMAC, uh, which is our software verifier. And uh, I'll in particular focus on uh, Rust. Uh, if you have any questions, please either unmute yourself or ask them in the chat. Um, one of my students uh, who is a collaborator on this project, uh, Mark Baranowski, um, is here as well. And so he'll be keeping an eye on chat as well. Um, and there were two other students who attributed this to this work, uh, Jay Garzella and Sha Bohe. And, um, and this project is supported by NSF, Amazon and VMware. Okay, so before we get to you know multi-language verification and, and Rust and so on, um, I want to give a little bit of background information on our SMAC verifier. So this is um, a tool flow of SMAC. Um, so SMAC is based around um, LVM um, on, on the front end side and uh, Boogie intermediate verification language on the back end side. Um, and this is the tool flow that we've been using for year not, years now, where we're mainly focusing on C, uh, which is processed by Clang and LVM into LVM IR, where we use a bunch of kind of analysis optimizations that are built into LVM to simplify it. And then the core of SMAC is this LVM to BPL module, module that translates LVM IR into Boogie code. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Boogie. It's a pretty popular intermediate verification language supported by a number of uh, verification tools. Um, and the one that we mainly use is called Corral. Um, and Corral is basically a bounded model checking engine uh, with some advanced techniques to make it scale better. But we, we can use a bunch of others as well. Um, okay, so um, are we, so the main advantage I would say of the SMAC verifier is that it decouples source language details from verifier implementations. Uh, so because we will leverage LVMIR and Boogie uh, intermediate verification language. And that enables, um, as we'll see also in this talk, fast verifier uh, input language and translation prototyping. So for example, adding, adding a new backend verifier is trivial. Um, if you want to write a new verification algorithm and you support Boogie, you can trivially add it into the SMAC tool flow. Um, and also you can experiment with different translations, different input languages, modeling, and so on. Uh, then again, um, this really facilitates uh, fast empirical evaluation and reproducibility. Uh, if you develop a verifier for Boogie, you plug it into the SMEC tool flow and you have instant access to maybe 10,000 benchmarks or something like that on which you can try uh, your verifier, compare it with the existing verifiers and so on. Uh, so the tool is free and open source. Um, it has a very permissible license. It is, it's easy to use it in the industry. We host on GitHub. It's not super big. So if you want to hack into SMAC, um, it shouldn't be too hard to wrap your hand around the code. Um, so um, we've used SMAC on fairly large and complex software projects. Um, and we can do that because we can plug it into existing build systems. And we've worked on that uh, quite a lot. Uh, so, you know, we applied it on something like OpenSSH um, and clearly to be able to do that, you have to understand uh, their build system. Um, SMEC is fairly automatic, scalable, precise and soundy. Um, we try to kind of list all the assumptions we make in terms of soundness. Um, in general, false bugs are uh, quite rare. 
So it's re modeling is really precise. Um, and then whether we miss bugs or not, that depends on the select back and verifier. Uh, usually we use Coral, which is bounded model checking. And so the typical reason why we might, might miss bugs is if we, if we don't are all loops enough. And then it generates error trace for debugging. Um, and we have some experimental support for deductive verification with pre and post conditions, and it's something we want to work more on. Okay, so that's uh, the overview of SMAC. Let me just quickly walk you through how this translation works into Boogie. Um, so the first thing we do is we translate to LMIR using Clang. We don't do anything special there. It's just off the shelf uh, Clang compiler. Um, and here is a small example C program. This is the LMIR code that you get on the right. And then the meat of SMAC is this translation into Boogie. Um, I wanna spend a little bit more time here. I'm not gonna go into details. Um, you know, original C code is on the right. It goes through LMIR and you get the boogie code on the, on, the, on the right. And if you've never seen boogie, um, you know, it's a procedural language um, and it's meant for verification. So the type system is kind of similar to what you see in SMP solvers. Uh, so there are no things like pointers and so on. Um, usually you model memory using arrays and you can see this array dollar M here that we use to model memory. Um, and another important thing uh, that I want to stress out is that, you know, the original C code invokes malloc. Um, in Boogie, we translate that to the invocation of this procedure called malloc, uh, but we have to provide some kind of model for this. Um, you know, we don't translate the actual allocators into Boogie directly, but rather we model memory allocation um, to make it suitable for verification. Um, and this will come up again, uh, this issue of modeling, let's say the standard library and so on. I'll talk about it more. Okay, um, any questions so far? Uh, I was wondering when you do the translation, um, what optimizations do you use from LLVM? Ah, that's a great question. Honestly, I don't know off the top of my head. I would have to look at our source code. Uh, we kind of played with this a fair amount of, uh, we spent a fair amount of time picking and choosing which ones work well for us. Um, the, the main one we leverage a lot is alias analysis. And I'm not going to talk about how we do it in this talk, um, but basically we leverage it to split this gigantic memory map dollar M into many smaller memory maps. Um, and that really helps with uh, performance. And then apart from that, uh, you know, we do stuff like constant propagation. Um, what else do we do? We do this, uh, what is a mem to reg pass, right? So that we get rid of lots of memory accesses. Uh, memory accesses really kind of slow down things. Uh, so you wanna optimize them away as much as you can. Um, what else do we do? We do uh, some kind of rewriting where we try to get rid of um, structure accesses uh, and we try to rewrite them into memory accesses. Um, sometimes we do loop unrolling using LLVM, um, just kind of ahead of time for certain kinds of loops. So that sometimes helps. Um, I'm forgetting a lot of them, so I will have to look at the source code, uh, but that's a good question. And how do you handle? Go ahead. I think how do you handle any concerns that so these optimizations themselves might hide undefined behavior? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was about to ask. <laughs> this that. is a really good question, and it's uh, opens up a whole kind of other kinds of kind of worms that I wasn't planning to talk about. Um, so, in the presence of undefined behaviors, I mean, smack kind of de defines, depends on what Clang and LVM do. And so they can get masked by optimizations. In fact, they can get masked even if you don't enable any optimizations because Clang will sometimes generate interesting LVM IR depending on whether you have undefined behaviors or not. So we don't provide any guarantees that undefined behaviors are not going to get masked. Um, 
typically they don't, uh, but we certainly see kind of corner cases where we just don't see them anymore in SMAC and you might miss bugs because of that. Um, you can also get false bugs because of that and so on. So, um, yeah. But this is a great question. Any other questions? Okay. So I didn't want to talk more about this, but I, I have this dream that uh, all this kind of front ends like Clang and Rossi and so on will one day have a target called verify or verification uh, where the kind of things they do will be verification targeted. Um, and for example, they're not going to mask undefined behaviors. Um, and there is a bunch of other things that it front ends kind of do that makes verification harder. Um, so it would be awesome to, to have a target where, you know, they don't do it because it makes verification harder, but that's, that's kind of a dream of mine. Um, we'll see if it ever happens. Okay. So let me go ahead. Um, yeah, so we published this work. Uh, it was kind of uh, an experience paper. We're trying to add support for verification of moral languages to SMAC. Uh, so this is the basic tool flow. And we added uh, seven kind of additional languages. And we played a little bit with verification of these languages. And we tried to learn what the challenges are and so on. Uh, and Rust was among, of these, uh, among these languages. Um, so how do we go about doing this? Uh, we developed a, a suite of micro benchmarks. So these were just like tiny programs um, that tested for various language features. Um, and we implemented, you know, one such program in every one of these seven languages. And then um, we ran smack of that on all of them. And um, we tried to extend SMAC kind of with, with basic things to support all of these languages. Um, and here's the table that summarizes the results. Um, and, you know, Xs uh, marked features that SMAC that, was, that weren't easy to support in SMAC in a particular language. And if you look at kind of Xs versus check marks, you can kind of see that, you know, C, C++, Rust, Fortran, B, uh, work fairly well, almost kind of out of the box. I'll talk more about this. While languages such as Objective-C, Swift, and Kotlin um, are much harder to support. Um, and this is typically because of um, kind of dynamic features in languages and big runtimes and so on um, that are present in Objective-C, Swift, and Kotlin. Uh, so the, the more similar the language is to C, the kind of easier it is supported in SMAC. Um, so Fortran is an example of a language that it worked almost out of the box. We didn't have to change SMAC at all. And we could verify fairly complex programs in Fortran without any problems. Um, just because it's the way it's compiled into LMIR is very similar to C. Okay, and now I'll focus on what we did with Rust um, and how we went about supporting Rust. Okay, so coming back to the this tool flow of Smack, um, to support Rust, we had to add a couple of different things. So, first of all, um, on the front end side, uh, we had to add something I call Rust models. So these are mainly models for um, standard library functions of Rust. Um, we have the same thing for C. Um, and we had to do the same thing for Rust as well. Uh, I'll get the, get back to that aspect um, again in the, in the in the couple of slides. I find it to be maybe the most complicated aspect of supporting Rust and Smack. Then um, we have some common models, such as, for example, modeling of memory allocation. So these we just reused from um, what was written for C. So we didn't have to do any work there. Um, so memory allocation in Rust, we basically use the same model as, as what we have for C. 
And then in this LVM to BPM model uh, uh, module, um, we had to extend it to support um, some additional LVM IR instructions and features that we did not need for C. Uh, and I'll talk more about this in the upcoming slides. So, you know, SMEC doesn't support the whole of the whole of LVMIR. Um, LVMIR is really big, and so we support the subset, and the subset we support was mainly driven by what Clang generates. To support Rust, we had to add a few more things. Um, so let me show also a simple example, um, kind of how the syntax looks like if you want to apply SMEC on Rust. Um, we've seen similar syntax uh, in other tools that were presented in this workshop. So, you know, the main thing that we need is to be able to introduce non deterministic values. Um, and uh, in the main function, you can see the syntax for that. Uh, Mark, who is a student of mine, um, I, I kind of like the syntax he came up with. So basically, we can compile this into an executable as well. Uh, and in that case, instead of non deterministic value, this value five is going to be plugged into this test case. Um, and then um, you can check assertion, assertions very similar to the way you would write assertions in, in Rust. Uh, so Daniel is asking, why do we need to make assert instead of just assert? Um, <laughs> it's funny because we played with a couple of different um, syntaxes and it's really easy to support assert as well. But then Rust doesn't have assume. And so we had like smack assume and assert. Um, and we were kind of debating what to do uh, to make it consistent. And then we added smack in front of assert. Um, but we can support assert as well easily. Uh, it was just kind of a syntactic choice. Uh, it's not a big deal. Um, and then, you know, we, if you run smack on this, uh, X is going to be unconstrained non mystic value, and it's going to discharge this assertion. Um, and this is a very easy example. Okay, so a little bit of these extensions we had to do. Um, so to support this Rust generated LVM, LVM, LVM IR construct, we mainly had to support structure operations and check the integer arithmetic. And then we also model some of the Rust libraries. That's a major challenge. Uh, I'll talk more about this. Um, what do I mean by structure operations? So LVMAR supports structures. So a function can return a structure, it can take a structure as input and so on. Um, uh, the C compiler Clang rarely generates code that uses structures. Uh, Rust generates it all the time. Um, and so we get a much better support for structures in SMEC. We model them as unreserved functions. Um, I'm not going to go into details how we do that, but that's kind of one extension that was needed. And then Rust uses this checked integer, integer arithmetic uh, all the time. Um, that wasn't too hard to, to support. Um, typically, we perform operations in double bit width, and then we check for overflow we needed. Uh, you can turn off overflow checking and then basically don't pay any performance penalty. Um, so that wasn't too hard. Um, most of the extensions are mainly kind of engineering work that we had to think about a little bit. And then modeling of Rust libraries. Um, so for things like memory management under mystic values, um, we invoke existing SMEX models that are written in C through foreign function interface. And then we have models for some popular Rust and the libraries such as uh, vector and box classes. Um, but many more are needed. And this is kind of a big showstopper um, that we've been working on a lot uh, in the past couple of months. Um, so we applied SMEC on some small, let's say real world programs, uh, just to see how far we can push it. Uh, so we picked this uutils library, which is basically re-implementation of GNU core utils, <laughs> which is well known uh, kind of test bench from the CLI project. And we verified a couple of simple utilities there. Uh, great question from Ralph. Um, I was actually going to talk about this more. So 
give me a couple of minutes and I'll get back to your question about whether we can just verify implementation versus modeling of vector. Uh, so in the interest of time, let me skip these results. Uh, we have to work a lot on performance and scalability. Uh, you know, this vector utility, it's like a hundred lines of code. If we want to verify kind of a notion of functional correctness, it takes like 15 minutes, which is way too long. And there are kind of good reasons for that, um, that I can talk about more. Um, okay, so one advantage of using LMIR as opposed to um, uh, something like uh, MIR is that uh, we can easily do cross language verification. So we have examples with, that mix Rust, unsafe Rust, and C, and we can just handle them using, you know, off the shelf smack once we did these addition, additions. Um, and so, so I think that's that's kind of a nice side effect of using LMIR. Um, I have one such example here, uh, you know, this Fibonacci implementation in C. I won't go into details, but you know, we can invoke it from Rust. Uh, we can pass non deterministic values for it. We have also a simple implementation of Fibonacci in Rust. We can check that it return the same result. Uh, and this is all really easy to do with SMAC. Uh, you compile all these things, you link them together and it just works. Okay, so some final thoughts. Um, some trade-offs of, I want to kind of discuss a little bit some trade-offs of such a design of SMAC. Um, mainly the fact that we go through LMIR and not some higher level uh, representation. So some advantages. So we avoid the mess of dealing with arbit range directly. For example, something like Rust closures just work. They're compiled, I think some kind of function pointers in LMIR that we support in SMAC and you write Rust project on three closures and you run SMAC on it and things just work. Um, then um, adding backend verifiers and solvers is easy. I already mentioned this. And we have access to all sorts of LLVMs, analysis, optimizations. And then finally, in the context of Rust, this cross language verification where you combine like Rust and C and maybe unsafe Rust uh, basically comes for free. Um, it just works again. Uh, there are disadvantages as well. Um, so that's why I said these are trade-offs. So we lose a bunch of source level information, in particular in the case of Rust, like type information, you know, non-aliasing information, original structures, and so on. Uh, and because of that, we definitely pay performance penalty in, in certain cases. Um, and coming back to this question that um, Ralph asked uh, about um, why don't we just use the implementation of the vector um, that is there in the standard library? Um, there are again kind of trade offs here. Uh, such, such implementations can often be really big and really optimized, and they're often not really kind of nice for the purpose of verification. And so, again, sometimes we can use such implementation and things just work, uh, but often we see a huge degradation in terms of scalability and performance. And so in that case, um, if an expert user such as my student Mark uh, goes in and you know reads the documentation of the library such as Vector uh, and implements it in a simpler way that is more suitable for verification, uh, we see huge improvements in terms of performance. Um, so it's kind of a trade-off, you know, are you going to spend manual effort and, and get uh, more performance or you just use all the shell implementation. And then, you know, uh, in terms of vector, you know, you have a fine line, five line, we saw cases where we have a five line program that uses a vector and it takes, you know, 15 minutes to verify it because this implementation of the vector drags in like lots and lots of additional code that SMAC has to go through. Um, so, so it's kind of a, a trade-off. Are there like abstraction or summary mechanisms you could use, like verify the actual vec once and then like store that and, and then only use the specification like you would do when like doing this in a yeah. program like, uh, logic, for example? Yeah, that, that's a great point. Yes, so, so we could do that. Um, and that's something that we would like to do more of. Um, 
people even publish these papers, you know, automatically generating specification summaries and stuff like that. So that's something we could try to explore as well. Um, but so yeah, you could write a simpler summary. You could check whether the implementation matches the summary, and then you could just use this summary in Smack. Um, so that's something you you could do as well. Um, okay, so Mark is taking care of a bunch of questions in chat, so I'm not going to jump there. Um, let me talk uh, maybe a minute or two about ongoing work. There is lots of it, um, and we are really interested in collaborating with people here. Um, I think they're kind of interesting projects that we could kind of come together on. Um, so we want to model more of the standard libraries. Um, this problem kind of starts, comes over and over again, comes up over and over again as we are moving to more and more kind of target applications. Uh, we're working on integrating SMAC, SMAC with Rust verification tools. Um, this project was presented here as well. Uh, this should be really straightforward because we already support all of the features that are needed. Uh, currently, we're kind of focused on verification of unsafe Rust. Um, I think this is when, where SMEC can excel. Um, we'll start with checking memory safety, but we're interested in other properties as well. Um, we're looking into checking concurrent Rust as well. Uh, SMEC does support verification of concurrent programs in some of the backends, so it shouldn't be hard too hard to add that. Um, we're kind of at the point where we're looking for good target applications. Uh, we are collaborating with my colleague Anton Birdstreet from UCR Irvine on some Rust OS verification, but we are always kind of keeping our eyes open for, for good kind of medium-sized benchmark, let's say, uh, to drive the work. And then um, there is this benchmark suite that we have been working on. Um, it's open source, it's on GitHub. Uh, we really want to expand it more. We'll kind of look at all of your projects, all of the GitHub repos, and we'll try to get your regressions and benchmarks from there and integrate it into our Rust benchmark suite. Um, I had some thoughts that maybe at some point we should try to organize a competition uh, as part of SVCOM. So I know Dirk Bayer well, and he will run the competition for you as long as you provide him, him with benchmarks. And so uh, the organization we could get almost for free. Um, and I have kind of love hate relationships with these competitions, but uh, they can be kind of useful to drive the area forward. And so um, I'll create maybe a topic on, on the chat um, about this. Um, if other people are interested, maybe we can do something about it. Okay, um, I'll stop here. Uh, I think I have maybe another minute or two for questions. Um, any other questions? Uh, yeah, we have a couple of minutes. Um, Ralph asks, um, can you say something more about how precisely you model LLVM semantics? Uh, yeah, I see the question about pointers. Um, I can open the link later and we can kind of discuss it. Um, I mean, I think in, okay, so we have knobs in Smack that you can kind of turn in terms of how precisely we model things and how sound we are. Um, so in terms of modeling of memory and pointers, you can crank the knob. So I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but for example, we have an option where we model pointers at kind of byte level accesses uh, at, at byte level. And so if you uh, turn something in, into an array of bytes and then you read the second byte, you'll get the right value out of it and stuff like that. Um, what I mean is that pointers aren't just integers, right? Pointers have extra provenance information, which is required to precisely model things like the details of get element pointer inbounds and, and, and horrible details like that. Um, that that's um, the kind of stuff I'm talking about. So, I mean, get element pointer, it just turns into pointer arithmetic. Um, yeah, but it has roots, right? Like you can't, uh, if, if you leave the bounds of the, um, in particular get element pointer without inbounds, uh, can, is allowed, you're allowed to create pointers that point outside the bounds of the allocation. But if you dereference those pointers, it's still UB because it still is like attached. It remembers the original object the pointer comes from, 
and you can't use it to access other pointers. Like, yeah, like okay. I mean, the, so, the, the, so the top, the, the, like, like summary here is pointer provenance, basically, is, is what we yeah. usually call this. So, so we, we do some of that. Uh, I mean, it's not, so we have an option to do like memory safety checking. And then in that case, we track a bunch of additional information about objects and pointers and so on that allows us to check things like that. I'm sure that we are not modeling the semantics completely and totally precisely, uh, but we do a little bit of that. Um, and I'll take a look at the link you sent um, and then maybe I can comment more. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, thanks for the talk, uh, Zvonimir.